going to take the north and never give it back. So that's a good pick. You get the corner. I got to go bold, right? I got to go bold for this. Oh, yeah. She's got some nice. Welcome back to the Unbearable Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Barron, and it feels good to be back. I hope everybody's doing great. I hope everyone's having a great week so far. It's been too long, but we are back. I've been sick, and you could probably still hear it in my voice. I've been trying to record some shows, and just overall, I just haven't been able to do it. So I was like, you know what? Wednesday, sickness or not, we're going to be going through this. We're going to be just hammering through this because today I, we have a lot to go through. We have Caleb Williams Pro Day I want to talk about. I haven't even talked about the whole Justin Fields trade. It's been that long. And also, I want to talk about some mock drafts. This is my first mock draft of the year, and I can't wait to show it to all of you lovely people. So with that, make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube. Joe, what is good, Bear? down indeed it feels too long i'm so glad that we are back and doing some shows so it's only going to get better i'm only going to be able to turn out some more content so i'm pumped but let's get this show on the road shall we so like i said i have not talked about justin fields so people that are watching this later or listening later if you don't want to hear any justin Fields stuff you can always just skip ahead but first i just want to give my due diligence and just say thank you to justin for what he meant to the Chicago Bears and also just what he meant as a fan. Because when we were tanking, the dude make it made it fun. He made it fun to watch. He made it enjoyable to watch. And overall, I'll always remember where I was when the Bears drafted Justin Fields. And I just want to say thank you because I have not yet. This is the first show since after the trade. So that's the thing I wanted to say out there. And and I, I miss him. I, I On Sunday when I saw the videos and everything like that, it was like, dang, it just, it just hurt. And so overall it's, I just hope I'm, I wish him the best of luck at Pittsburgh and I'm glad that he's out there on pits at Pittsburgh. And like they said, Brian Poles did right and traded him for a, a, a bad pick, <laughs> but overall, Justin at least has a chance to flourish and I wish him nothing but the best. If he's great and you know, God forbid, whoever we move on to like Caleb stinks to me, I'm just happy that Justin could do whatever he wants, but I'll always be a Bears fan. I'll always support the Bears, and that's why today we are going to be talking about the Bears because today we had Caleb Williams Day. We had the overall uh, Caleb Williams Day today. Let me actually switch back to the primary so we don't have the Justin stuff on it, but yeah, this was Caleb Williams Day today, and I think overall, we, it was it was so much fun. I don't know how many people have NFL Plus out there. I have it just so I can grind the tape and watch the film. And to me, Keenan Allen was there. That was awesome. Keenan Allen dapping up uh, Caleb Williams on the sidelines. And I think overall, when you see that, it's just a fun, it's a fun thing to watch. It's a fun thing to watch. And I was just giddy. I was just excited the whole time. But then also hearing people talk about just the ease of his throws it just gets you excited. And also Ryan Poles talking to Carl Williams, but also too, it just feels like it. I mean, we already kind of knew that Caleb Williams would be the pick, but it just continues to push that. And Brad Biggs wrote a column on it. And he said on Tuesday, the team spent nearly half the day on campus with Williams at the football facility. So half a day with Caleb Williams already talking ball, doing work on the whiteboard and watching film Williams attention to detail struck the Bears overall. So you love to hear it. There's just more and more things out there. And everyone there is just like, yeah, you kind of book it. Caleb to the Bears. That's what they're looking for as well. Bears Bode saying, I just watched the Caleb day. Yeah, the Caleb Pro Day. Oh my God. Right? It was, it was fun. It was just fun to watch. He made some really good throws. And you just see the ease at which he throws. Ron, what is good? Shy Drax say, we missed you, bro. I missed you as well. I missed all of you guys. And I recorded an episode too. And I was like, it doesn't feel right. I'm like my first show back from being sick. <laughs> I'm like, I want to be with you guys and talk it over with you all. So that's what I'm excited to go through. Cause also I want to go through my mock draft. Y'all will be able to give me some, some ratings out there too. So if you guys hate it, you know, be easy on me. <laughs> so also, yeah, Bears Bone say Keenan decked out in Bears clothes. I love that as well. Preston, what is good, my friend? If Neighbors or Odunze is there at nine, I think we need to take them. So yeah, that's the thing. And yeah, Shy Drax, we're, we're in a state of mourning. 
that's the thing that I also wanted to talk about with Justin Fields as well, because I know that some people are easy to move on from it, but others aren't. And I think I've, I've seen this with our show, with the fans of this show, we're like split right down the middle. Right. And I don't want to, yeah, it's like, no matter what it's, it's hard. It's morning. It's, it's a player that we were all super, super tied to. So it's, it's sad, but I'm excited for the future for sure. So, <laughs> and then Ron, right on schedule, you just say busting right there. <laughs> so let's get going and let's start talking about this mock off season, shall we? So I, I've done mock off seasons before, but today I am putting on the hat of Ian Cunningham. So for those that are new to the show, when I do a mock draft, I kind of take the role of Ian Cunningham, if you will, where I'm not necessarily this guy, Ryan Poles, but why I say I'm more like Ian Cunningham is I draft the way that I would want the draft to go, but I think about it very similarly to what have we seen Ryan Poles already do. And that's why I first just want us, us to address the current depth of the Chicago Bears. So before we even get into the mock draft, I want to just kind of walk into this because when we go into it and you look at the depth, this was a chart done by a ESPN employee. I totally forgot who actually posted this, but it was a four point scale on where he thinks every single team is at. And the Chicago bears are smack dab in the middle and they do a four point scale at certain position groups. And the lowest grades that the bears got was that defensive tackle at 0.6. Because when you think about it, we have Andrew Billings, who's a solid defensive tackle, and he's not going to factor in the potential growth for a Javon Dexter or Zach Pickens. So honestly, it stings a little bit, but it, it's fair. And we only have three defensive tackles basically on the roster. And then the next is quarterback where we have Tyson Bajant. So yeah, they gave us a 1.0 fair. And then at the edge spot, they gave us a 1.8 because yet again, they're assessing the entire situation, depth included. And really, when you see that, you have Montez Sweat that raises it up. And Demarcus Walker, he's probably not too hyped about that. But I bring this up because you look at the other spots, and I'm surprised that he gave us the 3.0 at the O line, 3.0 at the tight end position, 2.8 at the wide receiver position. But I want to highlight that wide receiver position because we have two great wide receivers. And I already see some chat about there with wide receivers already. I see Tony, what's good? Uh, top wide receiver is gone at nine. This is one of the things that I find very interesting is with the wide receivers, do we need another elite wide receiver if they're there at nine? And I'm not saying I would say yes or no. I'm just asking the question to you as fans, because if you already have two great wide receivers and yet again, going into the mind of like a Ryan Poles, when you go into that, he's usually trying in the rounds one, two, and three, it always seems like Ryan Poles more so tries to go after not necessarily best player available, but the biggest hole on the team. We saw this with Darnell Wright, and we said this on the show. We said the Bears are going Darnell Wright because, or they're going offensive tackle because if you looked at the depth of the position at the draft, and Ryan Poles, right, that whole adage, if Ryan Poles didn't say it, it's just a rumor. Ryan Poles said this, that he literally looks at the draft and sees where position groups fall and kind of those different tiers and then decides the draft based on that. And that's where I always said he's going to go offensive tackle. I wanted, you know, Jalen Carter just because of him being a beast, but ultimately Ryan Poles would go offensive tackle because they didn't have one last year. So keep that in mind as we go through this, because it does kind of bring up the question with wide receivers because, but it would be freaking awesome if we had three awesome wide receivers all at once. Right. And I've just put the best one best people around a, um, a, I was going to say Justin Fields around a Caleb Williams, but I want to talk a little bit more about, and this is where I want to talk a little bit about also just not just the depth that we have, but also the free agents that are there too. Cause if you look at the defensive ends, which we need a defensive end, there's a lot of free agents that are still available. Calais Campbell, Carl Lawson, Mike Dana, Kyle Vanoy, Bud Dupree, Yannick Ngakwe, Jerry Hughes, Marcus Golden, Rasheem Green, Charles Harris, um, Emmanuel Agba, and Justin Houston. So there's still some people that you could potentially add as like rotational depth and wide receivers, Odell Beckham Jr., Tyler Boyd, DJ Chark, Michael Thomas, Josh Reynolds, Quez Watkins, Paris Campbell, Isaiah Hodgins, Mike Williams, 
Oh, I think just actually, he just got picked up. This list is a little like a day old because I was hoping to go live yesterday. Hunter Renfro, Michael Gallup, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, and then people we don't really have to bring up, but EQ St. Brown, Byron Pringle, Chase Claypool, eh, and uh, Russell Gage. But I wanted to at least bring this up because I wanted to just talk about that there's also free agents because when you look at the defensive tackle position and those that have listened to the show, you know where I might be going with this with my mock draft. Defensive tackles, there's really not a lot out there. So I d that is definitely something that I'm looking at our overall depth and going, well, maybe we might need that because we only have three defensive tackles on the roster. And when I look at potential needs, the Bears like to run this whole, um, the whole system of lines, of defensive lines, right? Like the hockey lines, where you have two players on the D-tackle spot, and then you sub out for the other two players. We really just have three, three defensive tackles. No offense to Michael Duarmafor, but <laughs> we really just have those three. And that's why I think that low-key defensive tackle is a pretty big need for the Chicago Bears. Also, Shy Drax gave me a chuckle. Don't forget to like people. Sick boy needs it. Uh, agreed. I'm I'm trying to hold it in. I have a um I have a bottle of water and I think I might like cough a little bit or like take a take a drink of water or something when I I downloaded a NFL draft chime so I can kind of take a little take a little uh you know drink in between there. Preston uh saying Keenan is 32 and you never know about injuries. Very good point. Getting someone to grow with Caleb and learn from DJ um, and Keenan would be investing in the future. Agreed. That those are also very good points. With that, Bears bones. We need a quality D end. I agree. And I think this is where it's so interesting with the draft because, like, even though that we have three great wide receivers, yeah, like how many years of Keenan Allen do you truly have? And but another question is, where can you get? some of these wide receivers so that is the question as we go into the draft so without further ado we got to go into the draft so with the first pick in the nfl draft let me uh let me get this squared away i, I got to get this all set up so ready first pick in the nfl draft the chicago bears select none other than caleb williams so i just sent out the poll out in the chat how would you grade this pick? Caleb Williams, right? Absolute shocker. What do we think about this? So Caleb Williams. Now, what can I tell you about Caleb Williams? And I'm actually just going to move my face right over here. Hopefully that shows up in YouTube as well. Um, Caleb Williams, 6'1", 215, or measured at six foot seven eighths, right? Who cares? He's about 6'1". The biggest thing is the arm talent. And we've talked a lot about him. But also the biggest question mark to me is that what I call big play hunting. He's always hunting for that big play. And what he did today was he, rather than what people call, rather than the dunk contest, he's showing how to make free throws. He's showing how to make the basic stuff happen because that's what people are curious about with him. Can he make the easy things happen? And when you watch the tape, when he does have structure, he does play well. And so to me, it, it's the no brainer. I think you gotta go with that number one pick. You got to go with him. You got to go with the talent. And obviously, we have 73% A's out there already inside of the comments. Yeah, very, very simple. Um, but then also, ooh, fly the dub. What is good? Saying Brendan Rice in the third. Glenn saying, yeah, Williams look good at that pro day. So much fun to watch. I think now it's going to be out on the um, NFL Network so people can watch it without NFL+. Plus. But yeah, we got 75% saying and A, there's really not much else that I can necessarily talk about with Caleb Williams. We know Caleb Williams and just, we kind of expect this to happen. So Caleb Williams overall, number one, love the person. I, I like the personality so far when he's talking, just reminds me of just a normal person. Like he's, he's not just a, he's just a normal person, more like that popular type of guy. So it might rub some people the wrong way, but I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I'd rather have a little bit of Jim McMahon in my quarterback. You know, I, I'd have that more than like a Trubisky. So I like the little bit of swagger that he brings and also how he got his teammates riled up during the pro day. Absolutely love it. Caleb Williams, my first pick in the draft. So now what goes on with the number nine pick? So I already see some stuff out there. 
What do you guys think I want to do with the number nine pick? Because I wish I had a screenshot of this. I really should have grabbed a screenshot. No wide receivers are on the board. What do you do? Do you go? And I think a lot of people say, okay, no wide receivers. Dallas Turner, the defensive end out of Alabama, not on the board. So I think Jared Verse a lot of times is that pick that people are making where you get the defensive end. And Jared Verse has always been my number one defensive end prospect on the board. And that's the person that I've always wrote with. That's the person that I really like. And if the Bears stay here, <laughs> Tony's saying, obviously you're going to tackle. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> so um, so with this, <laughs> we're going with, so deep end is something that we might want to go with. But then something that we need to consider as Ryan Poles, right? Today we are I Ian Cunningham. We're helping out Ryan Poles. Look what's happening behind the Bears. The New York Jets just added a wide receiver. They just added multiple offensive tackles. They are more inside of this kind of win now moment. What position don't they have on their offense? Tight end. Brock Bowers is seen as this kind of generational or, you know, everyone says generational. He's seen as the can't miss tight end prospect. So the Jets might want to take Brock Bowers. Who else wants to take Brock Bowers? Brock Bowers is a very talented player. I'm not here to say that the Bears are going to draft Brock Bowers. But what I am going to say is there's a team in Indianapolis that really wants Brock Bowers, as according to reports. Same thing with the Cincinnati Bengals. If the Bears are looking to trade back, look at 15, look at 18 with the Bengals as a potential spot to trade down. And I think, too, does Ryan Poles love one of these defensive linemen more than anything else if it's just a defensive lineman area rather than the wide receivers? So, with the number nine pick, I am going to be trading down with the Indianapolis Colts and trading the number nine pick and picking up pick number 15 and 46. So, I'm getting a first rounder and a second rounder. So, so pretty close, right? So pretty, pretty, pretty close out there. And also just looking at some people, Preston saying trade back, Tony saying D-tackle, that I was probably going to go D-tackle, uh, Joe saying verse. Um, but yeah, so you get a little bit of picks out there, right? Because this the, the take that I have on this is I really like a lot of these defensive linemen because when you look at a Liatu Latu, like what Preston's talking about, I love Latu. You saw him at his pro day fast. He's a smart player. I think that there's some really good defensive linemen that you can get. Jared Verse, I don't think he's going to last until 15, but it's a risk that you go, okay, well, if I walk away with Latu or if I walk away with Johnny Newton, if I walk away with Byron Murphy, some of these other defensive linemen, I feel good. And if all of them are gone, I might trade back again or I might just go, Yo, screw it. I'm taking Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver out of, out of LSU. So we're picking up a first and we're picking up a second. So that means it's time for us to make a pick. And as you probably guessed it, Jared Verse off the board. So really, I'm going with one of these defensive linemen. And I think all those reading through the tea leaves know who I'm probably going to be taking. In the NFL draft, the Chicago Bears select my boy, Byron Murphy Jr., defensive tackle out of Texas. And to me, this is one of my favorite picks. And I, I am probably leading the Byron Murphy fan club right about now. But the reason why I think that this just screams Ryan Poles, you are talking about someone that was at the Senior Bowl. You are talking about someone that is flying up the draft boards just like a Darnell Wright did last year. You're talking about a huge hole that the Bears have on this defense that they need to have filled. Byron Murphy, depending on where you look at it, right now he's the 16th consensus player on the big board. I know those that use Pro Football Network, he's like the 26th prospect. They need to update their stuff because he's flying up big boards. He's now, the, I think, like the ninth in uh, PFF. And the thing about this guy, think of him like Ed Oliver. We have a certain defensive coordinator that came over from Buffalo Bills and looks at an Ed Oliver and Byron Murphy. Think about him like that. When you look at him, 19.6% pass rush win rate was, which was, I believe, top five in the 
NCAA, 9.5% run win rate was also in that same area. 91.5 pass rush grade is the first in everywhere inside the NCAA and also his 80.5 run grade was the 98th percentile. His true pass rush win rate was literally the 100th percentile. So when he's asked to rush the quarterback, headhunt the quarterback, that's what he does. Now he's the second overall prospect rated to, I mean, second um, highest graded defensive tackle prospect according to PFF. He's also the consensus defensive tackle number one. This addresses a huge need. And even though that I might personally have Latu higher just because I think Latu is an absolute freak, I think this solidifies this young defensive tackle group. And that's why to me, I really like Byron Murphy Jr. And I, Byron Murphy the second, and he's just explosive. He, yeah, second most hurries last year amongst all defensive tackles, fifth most pressures amongst all defensive tackles as well. Just incredible first, first step quickness. And also, what have the Bears talked about with defensive linemen? They want to develop them. Byron Murphy, even though he has this incredible strength, incredible athletic build, he still can develop some of these pass rush moves. And he still had five sacks last year. Still was very, very productive at the college level. And I think he's only moving up. But where's the question marks? Why is he? Because to me, he's not an elite player. The reason why he doesn't give that elite grade, in my opinion, is because just like at Oliver, he lacks the size. He lacks more of that length. Like his, he has a little bit shorter of arms. And you kind of saw that against longer offensive linemen where they can really kind of put their arms out on him and get a little step on him. So that's my only concern about him. But overall, very good prospect. Let me see what we're thinking. We got 29% A, 41% B. 12% C and 18% D. I I kind of expected a little bit of a a little bit of downgrades on it just because it's not one of the it's not one of the normal ones, but I'm just saying that out there it's something to be looking at. We got Bears Bones saying knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Fly the W saying if they can trade back and get a second, they can go Xavier Legat. Yeah, center maybe as well. Uh David saying what's what's good David saying JPJ what um I would have gone with that. I'm actually curious if they're going to go center. I think that's my biggest question with that. So Chicago Drax saying, honestly, the picks could go so many ways. I truly trust polls. Yeah, what he does best. I, I agree. And then fly the W saying, I like Byron Murphy. Haven't heard a lot of buzz that Bears would be le leaning towards a D tackle that early. But they, I, I don't, be it's not that I don't believe, um, yeah. No, we can't just reach out to us, <laughs> Brad. Um, and then also Bears Bone saying so he sounds like Aaron Donald at the stage in the draft. That's a that's bold, but I think that the big thing is it's a little bit like that where he's a little bit undersized. Aaron Donald, to me, dominated a lot more than Byron Murphy, but Byron Murphy, he gives you the athletic score. And actually, this is his chart up that people can kind of see. You see that he was literally in June projected to kind of go undrafted and then just skyrocketed up to the top, similar to what Darnell Wright did. I remember when people were saying, Darnell Wright to the Bears, like a week before the draft, people were going, what? It, like, he's like the 20th best prospect out there, and then ultimately just skyrocketed. And that's where my, my vibe, this is just my vibe with just what has Ryan Poles done. He's addressed the number one position, the number one position of need, and it's not... It's no knock against Javon Dexter or Zach Pickens. It's just you have three defensive tackles. So you need at least one to kind of have that hockey line of two and two. So that that's why to me, I would not be surprised if Byron Murphy ends up being the pick. And you look at his RAS score, 8.95. Yet again, the size is the thing that really kind of knocks him. Being only six foot, that's in the 0.96 uh, for the RAS score. But 4.95. Eight or four nine six for the overall weight score at two ninety seven. So it's not like he's not like a Braden Fisk where he's super super light with some of this stuff. But I think overall Byron Murphy, absolutely impressive athlete. Four eight seven forty time, very very good. So let's go into the second round. So majority are saying B. That's what we're going to go with. I, fair right. And also we traded back, so we did get that at the at the 15th pick so 
15th pick, we went defensive tackle. Then we have, I believe it was the 46th pick. And I'll I'll give you a little bit. I really need to just screenshot what goes on in these mock drafts so that y'all can see what's going on. Because I saw that we were saying, okay, Xavier Leggett, Fly the Dub was saying that. Like, what if we get Xavier Leggett? Xavier Leggett was not there. But I 100% agree with you. Xavier Leggett, to me, reminds me a lot of DK Metcalf coming out. And I think that Shane Waldron will see that and really, really like that. Unfortunately, when I was looking at the draft board, and I just want to paint this picture before, and people that join later, they might go, why did he go this way? When I was looking at the draft board, a lot of the receivers that were on there were like Roman Wilson, who is like a slot. We have Ricky Pearsall, who is a slot. And I think about Keenan Allen, and it seems like he's found this new life at the slot position. So that's why I feel like he's going to kind of more so play there. Another person that I low-key really like that is also moving up a lot of draft boards is Jermaine Burton out of uh, out of Alabama. Very talented wide receiver. The thing that gets me nervous about him, though, with yet again, I'm playing Ian Cunningham here, saying I don't. Maybe Ryan Poles might not like him because he's almost too fiery. Not like not like Caleb Williams, where he's got passion for the game. We're talking about. He might yell at the quarterback because he's not getting targeted because he keeps throwing it to DJ Moore and Keenan Allen and Cole Komet and Gerald Everett. So the wide receiver group, I just didn't really like that I had at that pick. I was kind of screwed over out of this. So for those that want wide receiver, you got to give me a slide on this because it wasn't good at all. (laughs) And also Zach Frazier, the center out of West Virginia, was not there. So I'm looking at this going, okay, well, I have a defensive tackle. I don't necessarily love some of these wide receivers because they play more that slot role. I could go with that. Or when I look later on in the draft, I go, you know what? I kind of want to build up this draft. And I'm actually really curious to see what people have to say about this because this to me is going to be one of the more intriguing options. And I really want to know what everyone thinks about this because there was only one person that was a pretty good value at that pick. And... The Chicago Bears select, wait for it, Chris Braswell, defensive end out of Alabama. Now, this is a player that I'm not insanely high on. So if anyone gives me a C or a D, I, 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 won't, I won't yell at you. But Chris Braswell to me, 6'3", 255. This guy is a very good athlete. And when you look at how the Bears want to build this defensive end room, he's kind of like the off-brand version of Dallas Turner if you, we aren't able to hit on one and let me start the poll i should probably do that first it, he's the off-brand version of the dallas turner he is a very fast athlete it's four six forty time 10 yard split of one five eight and i think ultimately chris braswell gives the chicago bears more of that speed ed, edge rusher the thing that i don't necessarily love about him is the anchor i didn't see him kind of like sit, sink down and really kind of just hold that defensive lineman But honestly, when I see more of the other edges in the class, I didn't necessarily see this. But yet again, fits the mold of Ryan Poles, where he's this senior ball player that also had um, a poor, um, or else I had a very good RAS score. Also, I'm seeing out there, C grade out there. Yep. (laughs) So also, are we getting too many ads out there? Is YouTube adding too many ads, Tony? Let me know down in the comments. I see that with, uh, is Tom Brady? There's too many Hertz hats out there, but 42 tackles, eight sacks, three forced fumbles, 33 hurries, had a pretty good year last year, but really is more this speed to power rusher. Reminds me of the off-brand Will Anderson, Dallas Turner, kind of those typical Alabama edges that I think could be a good addition to this room. And also another reason why I'm double dipping at defensive line is because I think with the defensive line room, something that I want to see is I don't necessarily love some of these players in the third round. And that's the big reason why I'm trying to double dip in the defensive line class. Because at pick 75, I'm more so thinking that if anyone falls, it's going to be like a Tafandre Sweat out of Texas because he's 366 pounds. Or a, you know, Austin Booker was someone out of Kansas that might be there, but he's had a bad draft process so far. And then maybe like a Braylon Trice out of Washington could fall. But I wanted to get this just to kind of solidify this defensive line room overall 
18.2% pass rush win rate, 5.4% run stop can really kind of give you more on the overall pass rush and defensive line side of things. So all of a sudden I got out here, we have an A grade for um, 12% from for an A, 29% for a B, 35 for C, 24% D. I, I get it, right? I, I get the D. I, uh, that sounded weird. No, I get the D rating. <laughs> I get the D rating out there. So no worries, no love lost at all out there. But let me see what all of you all are saying out there. But trade nine, Coleman. Yeah, so actually, that, that's a very good point. Coleman was also gone at that point in time. I'm not a huge Keon Coleman fan just because he doesn't create a lot of separation for my liking, but he is a very intriguing prospect because he just has a very high ceiling with that. Preston saying personally, like edge a bit more because we don't have any developing edges. And I will say this too, with, um, hmm, uh, I will say this, my smoke alarm's going off. So I'll just check my phone to see if there's an actual fire. Uh, let's see. <laughs> no, I think it's just going off a little bit, but I think I'm safe. If I get up and run, you'll know why. <laughs> but um, the other thing that I just want to talk about is I am curious about if you do a flip of defensive end and defensive tackle, because part of the reason why I kind of like that as well is like the whole Jared verse piece. But if you trade back and get lot to, it's about that, those medicals for sure. And I think I saw something else out there as well with the potential of that. And then also um, Sean saying no thanks on Braswell. I, like I said, I'm up and down on Braswell. I think he's solid, but I wish that he had a better like senior bowl and other, other little tests that he does hasn't really surprised me too much. But, um, but let's see. Da, 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 da. And then Sean saying first should have been Latu. Um, and then Latu. Yeah, that's where it too. I will say this, if the Bears like Latu Latu, Latu, I think that there's a good chance that you trade back, you get Latu Latu, and then you come away with like a Chris Jenkins out of Michigan here, or some of those other defensive tackles. So I don't mind that either. So that's, that's something that I'm curious about too, is what if you go D end first and then D tackle? Because now, I already know. We're saying, well, what about wide receivers? Well, this is where I think wide receivers, we've seen this with the, also it looks like 30% B, 30% C. That's a lot better than I actually thought, not gonna lie. Uh, so I'll take that. that. That's a passing grade right there. Actually, I don't have any Fs out there. So it's a passing grade. But let's talk about the, the third pick because this is where I like the idea of there's a lot of wide receivers that you can get that can contribute. Think about what the Packers have done where they draft a handful of these wide receivers and they can contribute. And there's some good receivers out there that still can last in the third. And keep in mind, my, uh, you know, uh, Mel Kuyper said this. He said, and Mel Kuyper, you know, take with a grain of salt, but I think this is more of one of those that it's fine with this. He said this is one of the most deep classes he's seen at the wide receiver position. Now, that might just be a Chris Hansen Bachelor thing where it's the most dramatic season of The Bachelor, but I really do think that I agree with that. I think that there's a lot of very, very good wide receivers, and I think a question, too, that the Bears need to ask is, do they see Keenan Allen as playing more of that slot role like he did at L.A.? Because if that's, if that's the answer, then you might need to find more of an outside wide receiver. So that leads me to the 75th pick where – there was a handful of good wide receivers and solid players out there, right? I know there's a Johnny Wilson. I think a lot of people are up and down on him. Malachi Corley as well. But ladies and gentlemen, there is one wide receiver that I really hope that the Chicago Bears get. And I think a lot of us hope that they get. Our Chicago Bears select. Brendan Rice, wide receiver out of USC. I had to do it. I had to do it. Brendan Rice, wide receiver out of USC. Let me see what all of you think about this. Let's go A, B, and C. 
And last but not least, D, I should do like D slash F or something like that. But no, no, we're, we're going to stay with D. So what do we think about this? I think this one's going to have a little bit more love with this. This was my method to the madness. 6'2", 208, senior wide receiver out of USC. We're sticking with the same thing. Another senior bowl player that is a, that tested pretty well at the combine. Not insanely well, but tested well. His strength, he's a very good route runner. You could tell that he was coached by Jerry himself. Good route runner. The biggest weakness is I don't see a lot of change of direction in his game, it, which sounds weird because of his route running, but also to um, a little bit like he's almost a little top heavy, but he doesn't play physical at the point of attack for the ball. Um, consensus big board rank. This guy is the 84th overall prospect wide receiver 16 on my big board. He's also wide receiver 16. He's projected to go in the third round and that's where we got him. My comp for him is more of a Jonathan Mingo that was coming out last year. We're more of this bigger bodied guy. PFF's 79th uh, graded wide receiver overall out there. 41, 45 receptions last year, 791 yards, 12 touchdowns, 4.3 drop percentage, a 25% contested catch rate. Like I said, not really an attack at the point of attack type of guy. Um, 61.5, or actually, Ignore the run block grade. That's not actually correct. Um, but the big thing, he's an out wide wide receiver, 28, uh, 283 snaps out wide, 45 in the slot. Also, this is Caleb Williams' boy. This is the person that Caleb Williams was talking about at the combine. This is his friend. And you see the interactions. All those that watch the pro day, you see when he talks to Brendan Rice, that's his best friend. That is his guy that's out there. And I love the idea what the Bengals did with Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. So to me, I love that you can bring him into this familiar situation. His friends there. He knows Keenan Allen. He knows Brendan Rice. This is just going to be Caleb Williams throwing it to his friends out there. That's why I waited on some of the wide receivers. Also, just because I didn't like some of those slots. I liked the going out wide with Brendan Rice. But also, this dude, lanky, 33-inch arms, can really help with some of the blocking snaps. You really see that. It has very good release off the line. The thing, too, that I just want to see as well, uh, my dad and I, we were watching the combine, and Brendan Rice just seems like he's uh, he needs to hit leg day a little bit more. I think he hits too much upper body. He's bulking too much. Uh, he's, he's very built uh, on his chest and shoulders type of thing. So I think he needs to, at the NFL level, you know, look a little bit more like a wide receiver. And I think that he'll be a little bit quicker because there's also some questions on that long speed. But overall, I like this pick. And I see a lot of this too. Um, people saying A, 60%, 27%, B, uh, 7%, C, and 7% D out there. But let's see what everyone else sees as well. Um, and yeah, also just as a recap, the smoke alarm did go off. We have one that just keeps beeping. So I think I just got to get a new one. I think my wife pushed the button and it just, it scares you because it says like carbon monoxide detected. And you're like, am I going to die? So, so Glenn's saying, I like the Murphy pick. He was efficient. Good. I like that. I like that. Uh, his supper's burning. <laughs> um, Mob saying down to 18, 19, JPJ. It would be interesting, right? I just, I don't, know if the bears would actually draft that high and i think also brad spielberger echoed this too it's, it'll be cur I, I don't know if they'll spend that much on a offensive lineman now they were there right they were there at the oregon pro day so maybe maybe they do and <laughs> yeah brett Rippin. let's see roman wilson in the third might be good i'm curious to see how high he ends up going because i think roman wilson is going a little bit higher now um but yeah i'm saying brett Rippin, we trust so let's see what else is out there. Yeah, 20 votes too. I, I guess I didn't see how many votes were actually out there too. <laughs> so Mob saying we need an outside uh, wide receiver. Keenan are going to be playing a lot in the numbers. Agreed with that. So, and then Sean saying might be able to go Brendan Rice in the fourth. He's dropping a lot. That's what I've been seeing too, is that he, like I said, now he's more in the 84th range before he was like perfectly at the 75 out there, you know, truly. So Bryson Pierce, um, all third round wide receivers. Pearsall, I, I'm curious about Pearsall. 
uh, for sure. So, but yeah, a lot of people looks like a lot of people like rice out there. Um, yeah, it, it just, it just seems like it makes too much sense. So let's, let's talk a little bit more. And actually I think I have his RAS score as well. So we can talk about that. Like I said, 7.91, not incredible. He's a little taller, 6'2", which is 8.15 grade for that. And then weight, you know, he's a little bit bigger, but he's not gigantic. So 208 and then 4540 yard dash. It's not amazing. It's not great, but you know what? That'll do. That will do. So now let's go over to an overall A grade. That's what I thought with that one. So let's talk about the fourth pick. And if I was a betting man, I would say that Ryan Poles trades this like out of any of the other picks, even outside of nine, because if Malik Neighbors is there at nine, the Bears got to go Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors is just too freaking talented to pass on, to pass on overall. Like he's too freaking good. So the pick 122, Bears are trading out of. This screams Ryan Poles trade back because you already know he's going to trade it back for like a five, a six, and a seven, you know, two sevens or something like that. He's going to trade the 122 pick. And that's exactly what we did in the mock draft as well. Bears trade back to just get more draft capital with the Buffalo Bills. We get pick 134, 189, and 248. That worked in the simulator. So ultimately, I'm going with that. Also, I forgot to mention this too. The simulator that I was using is the mock draftable uh, simulator, I believe. It's got the consensus boards out there too. Sometimes it, it goes a little wonky, but I tried not to steal when they just like have, you know, Jaden Daniels still there in the second round or something like that. So, but overall, let's go through. Also, John's saying Atlanta might lose pick eight because of tampering. That would be lovely. Absolutely lovely for sure. So yeah, like I said, Bears trade back. We have pick 134, 189, and 248 for pick 122. So with pick 134 in the NFL draft. One of my favorite wide receivers in the draft. We're double dipping on wide receiver. Malik Washington, wide receiver, ends up dropping. He's normally, he's the consensus 123 player in the NFL draft. Bears get him at 139, wide receiver out of Virginia. And if that name sounds familiar, used to be, used to play for Northwestern. Now, when he was with Northwestern, didn't do too much, transfers over to Virginia, 110 receiving yards, 1,420, or 110 receptions, 1,426 receiving yards, nine touchdowns. He's 5'8", 195, so he's smaller. And he's kind of had this one, one year wonder, but when you put on the tape, this dude cooks people. He was the Christmas route runner at the combine, yet again, the combine. But man, when he was watching, my, my dad and I were watching it, we we're going, that guy's good. <laughs> Washington is good. And also at the Shrine Bowl, he was cooking people. Reminds me a little bit of Tank Dell when he was coming out. He was the third highest graded wide receiver, um, according to PFF. Now, yes, this is going to be more of a slot guy. But to me, you are in the business of adding good players. Malik Washington is a very good player. 2.6% drop rate, 64.7% contested catch rate. Very, very good hands. Even though he's smaller, the Duke can get up there. He can make the big play. Like I said, four years at Northwestern before transferring. He also knows where the zones are. He can find the hole in the zone, sit in that. That is a quarterback's best friend. But yeah, just overall, I really liked him. I hope some people like this too, because he's a wide receiver that to me, that you can get in the fourth round, you're double dipping. And to me, that's what I want to do. If you're drafting a wide receiver in the third, I want to draft another one later on just to try and hit on one of them. Remember, these are lottery tickets. These are 50-50 shots. And if Brendan Rice doesn't pan out, you have Malik Washington. Chances are one of these players is going to hit overall. So that's what I wanted to go with with Malik Washington. I think I have his RAS score, 8.5 RAS score, 4.47, 40 time, 157, 10 yard split, and a 42 and a half inch vertical. This dude has ups, benched 19 reps. Even though he's 5'8", 191, this dude is strong. And also, 
The biggest thing that I'll say about him too, you look at his weight, that's 4.2. His size is 0.79 on that RAS score. This isn't Tank Dell where Tank Dell is, you know, super fragile, super skinny. Malik Washington is built. He's built like, he's actually built like a tank and he can take the beating of the NFL. So to me, that's why I really, really like this guy. Watch the tape. He is fun to watch. So he's one of my favorite. I have him as my wide receiver 13. I love his tape. I love what he can bring. So that's why to me, I'm super, super high on him. Overall, though, he is wide receiver 23. So we're double dipping here. But I want to see what everyone else has to say. 55% A's out there. But let's see. Um, and yeah, some offensive line. I, I, I knew I was going to get some offensive line comments too. Um, and this is where I'm looking at. The, actually, I don't, rem I don't remember some of the offensive linemen that were out there. I was just happy to see Malik Washington. But I am curious to see if the Bears will actually draft offensive linemen this year. And I, and I mean this because when you look at what they did in free agency, you know, they didn't sign any starters but they sign like a Coleman Shelton. They bring in a Ryan Bates as depth. They bring in a Matt Pryor as depth. And also I forgot the other guy that they brought over from Seattle just as another kind of depth piece. That's where I am curious if they are truly going to go after an offensive lineman. And that's where I think when you look at this roster, I look at, well, how much do they like Nate Davis or how much do they like um, Ryan Bates as an actual center, right? Or do they see him as a guard? Because if they see him as, no, Ryan Bates was never actually going to be the center in the first place, then I do feel that, hey, then let's maybe draft a center at this fourth spot or something like that. So I, I, I do agree with that sentiment, so for sure. But let's keep going. We still have another pick. I forgot what exact round this is. I think that it was like the fifth round or something like that. Let me just pull that up. In the sixth round, 189. So we are doing a huge, 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 huge drop. We are in no man's land where it's just a bunch of people out there. 189. Let's see. So at pick 189, yet again, this is where we go for depth. Chicago Bears select tight end. So we're going with the tight end number three, Dallin Holker out of Colorado State. And, you know, I might lower down my own grade on this as well. Um, but Dallin Holker, I, I'm not in love with this pick, but I like the player. He's a very good receiver out of Colorado State, 6'5", 235. So he's a little bit lighter weight um, from the tight end position. But this guy reminds me a little bit of Mike Gusecki, where he can just flat out moss people. Keep in mind, too, we're drafting at pick 198. So we're way, 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 way down there. Holker gives you depth at the tight end position because we really only have two out there besides Steven Carlson. So you have a young tight end that you can develop. A lot of the other ones that I liked weren't really around there. Um, but another option too, I also like Eric all out of, out of Iowa. There's just some questions with his medicals. Holker is also the guy that caught two balls at the gauntlet. Also yet again at the shrine bowl, Holker was someone that made a kind of his name as being this consistent target that they can tar that uh, the quarterbacks could really just throw to. And I believe in the first half, he got like all but one target from the quarterbacks. Now, the only thing he's not more of an inline tight end, 142 snaps in line, 267 out in the slot. That's where I, I don't know where the bears might want to go with their third tight end. Do they like the smaller tight ends more like a Gerald Everett or do they like the bigger traditional tight ends more like a Cole Komet that to me is something that I'm I am kind of curious about but I do know that they like their their big red zone targets Holker is someone that can moss people so not a great blocker but someone that is just a very good contested catch guy even though 50 percent contested catch when you put on the tape the dude can just jump and moss some people out there Tight end seven for me, and overall on the consensus big board, he is also tight end seven. And when you look at him as a as an athlete, a 4.78, which is a pretty okay 40 time, not a great 10-yard uh, split of 1.7, but overall 6'3", 241. That's what I thought. I need to update my numbers on him, but he's 6'3", 241, which is not super, super tall. A 3.22 is the grade according to the RAS score on that height. 
But yeah, 6'3", that puts him more in that Gerald Everett type of mold. So if that's the tight end that they're going for, he could be a good good match right there. But he's not your traditional in-line player. Let me see what people are saying out there. Yeah, it's good. It seems like it's kind of split right down the middle. That's where I'm thinking about this too. And I'm also looking out here at what we are thinking. <laughs> trenches, trenches, sick boy. Yeah, <laughs> what wants to airball too soon? That's that's what I'm thinking, man. You got to throw it out there. Um, but yeah, you got to trade back. Polls likes Rask scores agreed. Bear down. What's going on, Frog Man? Uh, and then Mob saying in an interview, Polls said he thought the position with the most depth in the draft was tackle. Thought he would have said wide receiver. I I do agree with him though with that where. Tackle does have a lot of depth this year. And that I think that's the thing that kind of stinks about this because offensive tackle, this is a very good offensive tackle class. And I remember last year we were saying, like I was mentioning at the very beginning, that a lot of the offensive tackles, you just didn't really have like a, it was really just a, those handful in day one. But besides that, no one else really like jumped out to me. So that that to me is is something. So also, Sean saying, do you remember the guy we drafted in the seventh round last year, defensive tackle out of a no-name college? Any status of how he developed? Did the Bears keep that guy? Yeah, Bell, he was picked up by another team. So he's actually not on the team anymore. But yeah, it was something Bell out of like Kennesaw State. So that was something. Yeah, he he was he was feisty, but unfortunately, we don't have him anymore. And that always felt good because you had like three D tackles come in. But yeah, he's gone. And yeah, only five likes. Yeah, make sure to hit that like button out there. We got 79 people watching right now. Um, but yeah, Sean saying, not a not a fan of this one. It's all good. We need to bring back Mercedes Lewis. I wouldn't mind that. I really wouldn't mind that. And I know when we've talked about Mercedes Lewis, um, I think to him, like I think overall, like Mercedes Lewis, he wants to win a Super Bowl. And last year he was just a little too early. He knew he knew Luke Getze. So that's where I'm curious too. So um Mob saying, holler, tight end, you, yeah, with um Iowa State. I mean, Iowa, yeah, you can always you can't go wrong if the Bears were to go like all um all out of uh Iowa. So someone to definitely look forward to. So Sean saying too, love your two wide receiver strategy. Really think we will do this. Not in first round, but two. Yeah, I that that's what I think they might ultimately end up doing. Now, the only thing that scares me about this strategy that I'm doing too is I know someone. I, I'm surprised, and maybe I skipped over this comment. I'm surprised that people haven't brought up how the Bears have kind of Tyler Scott hasn't looked great and Bayless hasn't looked great, but I think overall pretty darn good. Also, sh Triple R's or sh Sports sh Style Chicago. What's good, my friend Travis Bell? Yes, that's his first name. Got signed off the practice squad by Atlanta, but they cut him a week later into the season. So free agent. Yeah, that, that'd be interesting. Bears could call him up. And yeah, it's like you got to root for the guy. Bell was just an absolute dog out there. So yeah, but let, let's go to the last pick in the draft, shall we? And then we can recap everything. So the people jumping onto the show right now, you can also see what we did. So, and actually not this trade. Let me pull up the different trade. I got to remember the last pick in the draft. So pick 248. We are right at the borderline of, um, you know, no man's land. And I'm not going to pull an actual Ryan Poles here because Lord knows Ryan Poles in the seventh round. We've seen this. He will draft literally the 700th player on the consensus big board, like Kendall Steven. He'll draft Kendall, right? The safety out of Stanford, who's not on the team anymore, but he will draft his guys that he wants before he goes there. Also, Philip, my friend, I was wondering where you're going to be. How's it going, my friend? It's been too long. It's so nice to be back out there. And also, R Mr. Rivera saying you're grinding, my friend. Thank you. I, like, y'all could probably hear the snot. I got the tissues right next to me with this, too. So, yeah, every day I'm getting more and more excited for this draft. Keep go doing mocks. Also, I think also after this one, and I, I I could wait till the end to say this, maybe Sunday, should we do another fan mock? Let me know down in the comments. Should we do another fan mock where you all decide what we get to do? Let me know if you want a fan mock. So let's see, pick 246. 
Let's get through this. So pick 246. The draft. The Chicago Bears, everyone rejoiced. As the Bears drafted a center, Hunter Narzad out of Penn State. Now, I did do a full profile of this guy, but Hunter Narzad is a very good set. I, I like him as a day three, seventh round center, someone that you can uh, develop. And I, I honestly like him. When I was putting on the tape, I was like, how haven't more people seen this player? I think that he's like the 250th consensus. There's like three centers that I like in this seventh round area. And you look at him, he fits the zone scheme. 792 run block grade from PFF, 74.4 grade overall. And honestly, when you look at that compared to the other centers, pretty darn good. My biggest question mark with him, though, was pass protection. 61.9 pass block grade, 11 hurries given up, which is not great, but zero sacks on the interior. He's played also a little bit of everywhere. He's played at the tackle position, 458 snaps at right tackle uh, two years ago, 170 um, at left tackle in 2021, then 535 at left guard. I could just see the Bears really liking this guy. Big 10 guy and just solid football player. So to me, what do we think, right? We, we finally got our center out there as just a backup in the very, very last end of that. Also, I see a lot of people liking the um, the fan mock draft. I'll, I'll get that set up for us on Sunday so that we can get that going out there. So let's see. So pick, uh, good pick. Yeah, a lot of people liking that. So yeah, he's he's the center. <laughs> Bears phone celebrating. We got a center. That's right. We finally went offensive line. But this is what happens when you don't have a lot of draft picks. I think that's the hard part. Also, his overall, um, you know, offensive center, Hunter Narzad, uh, 6'3", 317. So pretty good size overall. Mr. Rivera liking that as well. Um, but let's look at this overall draft. And I kind of want to just see what everyone thinks about this because how would you grade this draft? Let me put this out at the poll. Um, how would you grade this draft? A, B, C, or D? Start poll. So let's just kind of do this quick little recap. I'm going to move my face over to the other top, top right over there. So we got Caleb Williams, number one overall. We traded back with the Colts and got picks 15 and 46. With that, we walk away with the best defensive tackle in the draft in Byron Murphy. And then we go with a defensive end that not a lot of people have talked about. Chris Braswell out of Alabama, kind of getting more of a speed rusher on the outside. Then we double dip at wide receiver where we go Brendan Rice out of USC at pick 75. Then we trade back from the 122 pick for 134, 189, and 248. And we pick up Malik Washington, wide receiver out of Virginia. Then we get some depth at the tight end position with Dallin Holker out of Colorado State. And last but not least, pick 248 going center Hunter Narzad to get a little bit of depth out there. But this is where I think we we, we kind of see where this goes. And I think ultimately, just seeing the comments out there, the big question, and this is why I like doing some of these mocks and talking it through with all of you, I think that the big question that the Bears have to ask themselves is, are they fine with Laatu Latu as a defensive end? I think that is a huge, huge question mark when they trade back because Latu, to me, has some of the best tape out there at, at defensive end. And you see his pro day. The dude is fast. The dude has crazy pass rush skills that you should not have as a defensive end. It's that the injury question mark that I think is the biggest piece in that game as to why or why not they go after him at that pick 15. But also, I'll say this too. I'll say this again. Ryan Poles loves drafting players at positions of need early. And that's where I, I think Byron Murphy, we're just going to hear more and more. I, I seriously think we're going to see more mocks of him going to the Bears. But the big question, too, is I really hope that Malik Neighbors, though, falls. <laughs> Malik Neighbors is so good. And, man, if we could have Malik Neighbors in this wide receiver room, whew, 
that'd be too much fun. But I think ultimately Bears might do something like this overall. So what do we have? We got 23% with A, 46 with B, 8% with C, 23% with D. Y'all breaking my heart with that. But no, I, I get it. I get it. So if we look at the overall um, depth chart for the Chicago Bears, when you look at this, I don't know why this image is so blurry, but I kind of like it when you look at the overall, you know, 100-foot view. You look at what the Bears have. We're clearly set at running back. You have Caleb Williams at the quarterback position. And then you look at the wide receivers. You got Rice as your outside receiver with uh, Allen and more. And then you look at the backups, right? You look at kind of those top five. You would then have Tyler Scott and Malik Washington. And then you have Bayless battling it out with Colin Johnson and Dante Pettis. I hope Colin Johnson wins. <laughs> but what I like about this is you really kind of clean up that wide receiver room. You also have multiple bites at the apple at the offensive line, uh, the wide receiver position. Then when you go to the offensive line, you're hoping that Nate Davis can do something. And I think the Bears will know a lot more when it comes to, they have this mini camp that's coming up before the draft. I think that's going to show a lot about what they think about Nate Davis. Is he going to come out here unprepared, not set up, not ready to play? Because if that's the case, I could see the Bears saying, listen, we're going to roll with uh, Bates. We're going to try and sign a, 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 a guard, or maybe we bring in an Olufashanu and a tackle, and then can Braxton Jones play that guard or someone else be more of that guard position for us? Something to look for. And then also on the defensive side of the ball, I wanted to throw this out there. So those, you could see this out on, um, out on the actual screen on YouTube. I had Derek Barnett out there because I was going to go live yesterday. Derek Barnett just got signed. So I just threw Yannick Ngakwe out there as a potential signing because the Bears still have money to sign a free agent if they want to. And if they want depth at the defensive end spot, they could bring in someone. I just threw Yannick out there because some people are starting to mock him out there. But when you look at the defense, this defense is insane. This defense is beastly. When you have... Billings and Byron Murphy the second as your starting defensive tackles with Jervon Dexter and Zach Pickens as the second line. Whew, that's I I love this interior and also you get Fluce the three technique that he wants. Something that I also didn't talk about with Byron Murphy. This guy is not just a three technique like a Johnny Newton. That's why he is moving up so much because he can play the one tech. He can play the three tech. He can play all over the line. Even though they had Tavondre Sweat, who's 366 pounds, Murphy still played a lot of that nose tackle position. He is a very good player. But Chris Braswell, kind of, I put him as that backup. So you have Walker as the starter. Braswell then can kind of fly off that edge. So let me know what you think. Because overall, I think that this was, this was solid. Now, if you flip up, if there was one other thing that I would do, maybe you go like, I, I, like I said, I like Latu. I don't know if Ryan Poles would go after Latu. If they trade back, it could be one of these defensive, like I said, defensive tackle, if anything else. So ultimately, you know, some ups and downs, but I think that's just kind of how this draft is going to go. I think that there's a lot for us to cover, and that's why this Sunday, I want to know what you all think. And that's why I think that the fan mock would be super fun. I think that's what we got to go with because ultimately that's going to be, I, that's always fun because I also love it because I just get to sit back and watch you all go after it. But also to those listening, feel free to create a YouTube account. You come out here and comment who you think that the bears will get because it's super fun for us to go through, but let's go through some of the comments before we wrap things up. Sean, giving me a B plus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bears bone saying good draft. We started with four and got seven. That's the thing too. I, I wanted to go with seven just because I didn't want it to be like, we got 10 draft picks and, but yeah, mob saying really likes Murphy. Sean saying Murphy's pretty great. Still like Latu better. That's fine. Like, like I said, Latu, I probably have higher on my board um, overall because I, I just like Latu as a player a lot more and Murphy, Murphy does have some ups and downs to him. Like, I'm not absolutely in love with By Byron Murphy. I also want to make that clear, too, to everyone. I'm not absolutely in love with him, but I just think that Ryan Poles ultimately is going to get his D-tackle. Um, 
And then, yeah, wish Bears Bones wishing D end at 15. Sean saying Malik was a great pick. Yeah, I, I hope he lasts that long because yeah, he's good. So, but also Broski, what's up? Right at the tail end, popping on in. Uh, yeah, so Broski saying, not yet, yeah, not a fan of the draft. No worries, my friend. It's it's a little different. I went different with this, so no worries at all. I like I said, no hard feelings. I, I got thick skin. <laughs> I'm I'm sick right now, so I, I can't I can't process feelings right now, my friend. Uh, but Shy Drax saying you did good, but I think polls is going to shock us and do things nobody expected. That's I, that's why I'm saying maybe Byron Murphy, or if he goes offensive line early, I would actually be shocked by that because just with the tackles, I still think that Braxton Jones is his boy. Like, cause he's seen as this, as this offensive talent evaluator. And I think that when he sees like Braxton Jones, I think he goes like, that's my boy. I drafted him in like the fifth round. Look at me. Right. I think that's what he might want. And bros, he's saying a lot to, upright not bendy enough that's another thing too that he's he doesn't show me the bend i think that's the other piece is the bend that's where i kind of knocked him as well bend and physicals uh like or the injuries um then sean saying for one of the last picks i think uh about a big right tackle can be shifted to guard in the nfl that's good yeah i think that could be the other take too and you know do we try and just kind of get some of those offensive linemen later Bears did, they do have a private workout with the Yale um, tackle where he's, which I think is a good move because he might be there in the third round and he's got a lot of good talent. Plus, you don't really want to send your scouts to the Yale Pro Day. So I think that that's a pro move by the Bears saying, you know what, you come to us, we got places to be, multiple people to see, but no offense to Yale, we ain't going to be sending some, someone out to you. <laughs> so Mob saying, D-tackle doesn't have depth. So if you don't think... Dexter isn't it, then yeah, grab D-tackle over right end. I think that's the big piece too. Um, and also, if that's the guy, right, you want some explosion up early, so that could be the ultimate play. Bears are staying at one and might actually trade up from nine using that Panthers 2025. That's a bold take. That would be interesting for sure. Same old as Texans. And yeah, move up, get neighbors or Marvin Harrison. That would be interesting. Rice is okay. Rome Wilson, Pearsall would be crazy good on the outside. Pearsall, he's tested a lot better, so he might be able to play outside. Wilson, I think he's more of that inside guy, though. That's And that's where we kind of go back to the Keenan Allen uh, debate. Also, there we go. F Green Bay in the chats. Let's get that going as well. Because that's, no matter what, that's what we can all agree on, no matter what we go with. Just going to go through some of these some of these as well before we wrap things up sean saying if we draft two good wide receivers as you suggest then bayless will be hitting the streets exact a man of taste a man of taste here right that's i think that's the big piece too you bayless is very untrustworthy and i don't want untrusted people around my quarterback so to me that's why i like the idea of double dipping at the wide receiver spot because also what we've historically seen is wide receivers you can get later on and there's, like we were saying, Pearsall out there. There's a handful of other wide receivers there, too. And, yeah, but also, as we talk about offensive line, Mob saying Jatiri Carter was pretty good. That's where there's a lot of good depth that the Bears do have. And that's where I, I'm i not on the – that's where I'm not super convinced that they go high with offensive line, and I'd be kind of shocked. So, Clowney, not sure if he signed yet. I want to say he was. Um, and then Cap. So the, the cap, I want to see how much they do have left. Like I mentioned before, they would have around like 20 something with the trade of Justin Fields. They also freed up an additional three. So it should be actually around the 23 million. But then when you factor in the, the draft picks and other things like that, the total of the draft picks is around 15 million. And obviously if we trade more, then we get more, more draft picks. But I think ultimately when you kind of subtract the other top 51 away from it, I think that we'll still, we might be able to sign, like I said, maybe just one other veteran, but you know, it's not going to be like what we did with unique, where it was like this $10 million deal. I think it'd be more around like the 5 million that we could be able to afford. So, um, yes, they do. Uh, um, yeah. And then try Drax. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, like you said, for the positive vibes, 
Yeah, we got to keep things positive. And that's where I missed all of you. I, like I said, I wanted to come back and talk with all of you for sure. Um, but then Broski saying chop over Latu or verse. I think that the bears will like chop over a lot of this. I think that is the, I think that is the interesting piece. And actually maybe if the bears wanted to go bold, you go Byron Murphy as the first D tackle, and then you trade up with that second pick that you get and maybe another pick and get a chop Robinson. That would be bold. That would be bold. So no matter who, yeah, I agree with you, Brad Baxter, no matter who, I hope they dominate. And also, too, with the draft, whenever they draft someone, we'll convince ourselves, you know, a month later that that we really like those. So, but good show signaling out, out peeps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I love you all out there and it's been too long. So I just wanted to talk with you, just kind of go through some of these, too. So, oh, uh, yeah, Caleb smoke lot to uh, yeah, trade down from nine. We got some conversations out there. So I think that's it. I, I got I got to get some uh s some more shots of uh, actually I need a Nyquil in me right about now. But guys, I missed you all so much. I'm so glad that I was able to put together this show and thank you all for making this so much fun. And if you haven't already, make sure to like. It helps tremendously with the show. Subscribe, share it out with your friends so they can join. Like I said on Sunday, might as well. Let's have a fan mock draft. It's been too long. I can't wait for that. It's good to be back. And with that unbearable sports podcast, we are out.